If you or I owe money to the IRS, they charge us 8% interest. On the flip side, if the IRS owes us money, then they pay us 0% be hit with an unexpected big tax bill next year. Whoopee. Uh, the IRS is now charging 8% interest on tax underpayments. That's nearly triple what it was just two years ago. So many people, so many Americans are paying interest to the IRS and they don't even know it. Last year, the IRS penalized approximately 20 million Americans with interest. And the IRS collected nearly $2 billion in penalties. We don't need to worry about taxes throughout the year. We'll just handle that in April, but the U.S. tax system is pay as you go. And so that means as you were earning throughout the year, you also need to be paying uh, taxes throughout the year. And because interest rates have spiked from less than 3% just a couple years ago, now to more than 8%, any penalty that you have, that's basically the interest on what you haven't paid. Oh, also, if you went to Vegas and make some money, make sure to you send your tax payment to the IRS. Oh. And if you don't, then you get charged with interest. So, you are watching the Financial Coffee Channel? Let's get into this. Here's the thing. You can disagree with me if you want. That's fine. If you get the big tax refund when you file your tax return, you basically give the IRS or the government an interest-free loan. IRS penalty for underpayment soars to 8%, nearly tripled what it was two years ago. The Internal Revenue Service penalty for tax underpayment has nearly tripled since 2021. As of October 2023, the IRS will now charge 8% interest on estimated tax underpayments, up from 3% just two years ago, according to the Wall Street Journal. When you file a tax return, if you end up owing money to the IRS, they will charge you 8% interest. Yes, there are situations where, when you get a tax refund, the IRS will charge you interest. And this is where it gets worse. You don't even realize it. Now, before we go any further, this is how you find out how much interest the IRS charge you. Now, when you fill out your individual income tax return, go to page 2. Then on page 2, skip to line 38. The amount of interest that the IRS charge you is listed right here. And let's be real, who actually pay attention to that? Nobody. But now you know. This is where you can check how much interest they are charging you. So this is where you can check how much interest they are charging you. Now, let's also find out how you can calculate the amount of interest you might be paying. Let's do a quick math. If you owe the IRS $10,000, they will charge you $10,000 times 8 and divide by 100, which is equal to $800. Now, if you owe the IRS $5,000, they will charge you 5000 times 8 and divide by 100, which is equal to $400. You get the picture, right? So this is a classic scenario. Let's say you finish your tax return and you see that you are getting a tax refund. That's great. Now you are very happy and excited about the tax refund. But even when you are getting a tax refund, the IRS can still charge you interest. And if they charge you interest, then it's just going to reduce your tax refund amount. So if your refund was supposed to be $2,000 and you owe them $500, then your refund is actually going to be $2,000 minus $500, which is $1,500. And most people don't know that. They are just happy with the fact that they are getting some money back. They are getting money back from the IRS, but they don't realize and they overlook the fact that the IRS reduced their tax refund amount by the interest penalty. The IRS is very sneaky like that. They don't tell you that up front. You also have the scenario where you finish doing your tax return, right? And you see that you owe money to the IRS. But what most people don't know is if they charge you interest, then they just add the interest to the amount that you owe to the IRS. So if you owe them $5,000, and then the interest is uh, $500, then the amount that you will pay them will be $5,500 or $5,500. Now, this is where it can get very tricky. If you have a tax balance due to the IRS, a big part of that could be an interest. Let me explain the situation. So you get a tax refund, but the IRS still charge you interest. This usually happens with gig workers, self-employed, independent contractors, sole proprietors, or even content creators on YouTube or Facebook. If you are self-employed, the IRS want their money as you earn it, meaning right away. Yeah. So who exactly would this affect first off? Like, I mean, who's going to be shaking in their boots a little bit as they head to Walmart this morning? <laughs> uh, it's going to be mostly contractors, consultants, gig workers who basically work for themselves, don't have a major corporation helping them withdraw from their taxes. Anything so that's why employees 
or people who have regular jobs have their taxes taken out of the paychecks, every single paycheck. And it's going to be the same concept. If you are self-employed, the R and S want their money throughout the course of the year. Let's say that you are self-employed and you send all your tax money that you owe at the end of the year as a lump sum, right? Then the IRS will charge you interest because they want the money right away as you earn it through the year. Basically, the money that you made in January, February, or March, they want that tax money in April. So if you don't send in installment payment, then they are going to charge you interest. There are even situations where you send in your tax payment, but you send it like a lump sum at the end of the year, and you send more money than you should, and you get a tax refund. But because you fail to send in your tax payment throughout the course of the year, then they are going to charge you interest. And your tax refund amount will get reduced by the interest penalty. So to summarize, the IRS wants their money in a timely manner, meaning right away. And if you fail to comply, then in most situations, you are going to get hit with the penalty. They are going to charge you interest. And the interest right now is 8% and going into January 2024 is going to stay there. They are keeping it at 8% for now. So this is your warning just a couple years ago, now to more than 8%. Any penalty that you have, that's basically the interest on what you haven't paid. So we're saying that is going to jump pretty precipitously. If you are used to owing money to the IRS when you file your tax return, just be aware that you may be paying a lot of interest to the IRS. So many people, so many Americans are paying interest to the IRS and they don't even know it. Last year, the IRS penalized approximately 20 million Americans with interest. And the IRS collected nearly $2 billion in penalties. That's a lot of people and that's a lot of money. This is our punishment for owing money to the IRS. And I really want you to pay attention to that. Now, fun fact. Do you know what happens when the IRS owe you money? In that situation, they don't pay you any interest. However, when you get a big tax refund, it's a nice surprise, right? But you are getting ripped off. If you think about it, it's a horrible deal. If you or I owe money to the IRS, they charge us 8% interest. On the flip side, if the IRS owe us money, then they pay us 0%. I mean, that's typical, right? But why are they charging us 8%? Why not 1% or 5%? Well, it depends on the interest rate that is set by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, or the Fed, has been raising interest rate to fight inflation. Therefore, because the Fed fund interest rate went up as quickly as it did, so did the IRS interest rate penalty. Back when interest rates were lower, and this was only two years ago, the interest rate that the IRS was using was 3%, but right now, it jumped to 8%. Here's the thing, you can disagree with me if you want, that's fine. If you get a big tax refund when you file your tax return, you basically give the IRS or the government an interest-free loan. So technically speaking, it's better if you complete your tax return and you end up close to breaking even with them, or if you end up even owing a little bit of money on your taxes. So if you complete your tax return and you end up owing $1,000 or less, then you will not be subject to interest. Then you won't have to pay interest because the rule only applies if you owe over $1,000. But now I'm going to be very practical here. I'm just being realistic because many people rely on the big tax refund as a lifeline for whatever reason. That's fine. I'm going to try to convince you to change your ways. But also, I want to be realistic and practical with your situation. If you normally owe money to the IRS when you file your tax return, it's a no-brainer. You have to fix that, especially with the 8% interest rate, because they are penalizing you with a big amount. It's cool if you are an employee, but if you have an LLC and you find yourself in a situation where you owe a lot of money, then you have to adjust your payroll settings, fix your W-4, modify your W-4, and hold more taxes on your paycheck. Talk to your payroll department, talk to HR or your company. You can ask them for help with what you are trying to do. But if they can't help you for whatever reason, or you simply can trust them for whatever reason, then ask your accountants. So it's really important if you are somebody who has more of an unconventional job, makes more unconventional kinds of income, that you speak with an accountant, or you go online, the IRS does have a withdrawal calculator that can help you estimate what payments you need to be making throughout the year. Uh, typically, most people recommend you do that quarterly. And of course, sometimes people who do work for a major corporation where you do have that withdrawal typically in place uh, by internal accounting departments, if you're not paying the correct amount, you are also going to be hit with that penalty. Yeah. Now, if you're a gig worker and an independent contractor, you own an LLC, you are self-employed or you are a sole proprietor, then you really have to make sure that you send them the appropriate amount of tax payment. 
and please do it on time. I believe that the last installment for this year 2023 is going to be due on January 16, 2024. So if you have missed your previous deadline, just send your estimate tax payment as soon as you can because you get charged interest on a daily basis. It is compounded daily. So the less that you owe, the less penalty that you have to pay on a daily basis. Now, there is one other situation that you have to watch out for and that happens when you have a larger amount of capital gain. In this case, you may have to send your tax payment even if you are an employee. Let me explain. One example that applies to you is when you made money in the stock market. I mean, just think about it for a moment. When you work for someone, your boss already takes your taxes from your paycheck. But if you made a profit from selling some stocks, that's your responsibility to send you the tax payment on your gain. Oh, also, if you went to Vegas and make some money, make sure to send your tax payment to the IRS. And if you don't, then you get charged with interest, depending on how much you owe and your circumstances. So be aware of that. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you have Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo? The IRS is coming for your money. If you have a few side hustle and you get paid by PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App, the IRS is coming for you and your money. To find out how, click on the video that I pay on the screen right now. That is all for today. Thank you for watching the Financial Coffee Channel, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.